Hi, this is Andy from GPS Training. In this video, we're taking a look at the differences between the two nav GPS devices that we stock. So if you're looking for a new two nav GPS device and you're trying to decide which one is going to be best for you, hopefully this video will help you. So laid out in front of me, left to right, I've got three units. I have the Cross Plus on the far left. In the middle, I have the Terra. And on the far right, I have the Adventurer 2 Plus unit. We also stock the Adventurer 2 Plus motor unit, which is exactly the same unit as the one on the far right, but it comes with the additional motorbike accessory ram mount, so you can attach it to a motorbike handlebars. So the main obvious differences when you look at the three units is going to be the size, and you probably noticed on the one on the far right, the Adventurer 2 Plus, it has a lot more buttons on the unit. I will cover the other two units which do have some buttons on the side of the unit that can be used to control certain features, but all three of them have touch screen as well, so they can be used from the touch screen. You will find with the Cross Plus and Terra, you, you have to use the touch screen for more functions than the Adventure 2 Plus, where we'll have a lot more additional buttons. The other deciding factor could be to do with battery life and the type of battery. So with the Cross Plus and the Terra, they both have an inbuilt battery that we can't remove ourselves. In the future, if you need something doing with the battery, I know two nav do offer that type of service, but the Cross Plus and the Terra both have an inbuilt lithium rechargeable battery. The difference with the Adventurer 2 Plus is if I turn it round, on the back of the unit there's this D-ring that we can unscrew and inside of the back of the unit we've actually got a lithium battery that we can remove, we can buy replacement batteries and we also have in our accessories list a AA battery pack that allows you to use the unit with AA batteries. So that could be a deciding factor on why you go for this unit. The other thing with the Adventurer 2 Plus, I mentioned we have the Moto version. So the Moto version is the one that comes with the accessory for mounting for a motorbike. So if you were going to use the unit on a motorbike, really the Adventurer 2 Plus is the only one that we do the motorbike mount for. Now with the Adventurer 2 Plus, there is some vehicle mounts as well that are available from 2Nav. And we tend to just stock the one with the motorbike mount. But if you were using it in a vehicle, it does actually have a small speaker on the back. Now on the motorbike, I don't think you're really going to hear the sound from the speaker. You will see notifications on the screen. But if it was inside a car, it does have a built-in speaker for voice commands if you're using road navigation maps with the device. So that is another difference. Now, all three devices come with worldwide open source maps as an option to be loaded on the units for free. So that's open source data maps for the whole of the world. With the Adventure 2 Plus or motor version, you do actually get TomTom Tom road navigation maps for Great Britain um, as an option for the unit free as part of the package. So that's the additional um, maps that you get with the Adventure 2 Plus or the motor version. Now that is available, you can buy loads of maps from 2NAV they have available for different countries, more detailed maps if you're going abroad, if you want something like the Ordnance Survey maps I have on these units for Great Britain, they have lots of options for things like IGN maps etc for other countries that you can purchase and download to the unit. But I'll just talk about the, the maps that we have available from stock when you buy a unit from ourselves. So when you pick any of the units in the drop down boxes, there's options to have a full Great Britain 1 to 50 Ordnance Survey map, which is the Land Ranger maps. That's what I've actually got installed on the Cross Plus on the far left. The two other units I've actually got installed, the full GB 1 to 25 more detailed Explorer maps. That is one of the other options. So in the drop down boxes for each of the units, they all come with the open source maps included um, as part of the package for free for the world. I mentioned the TomTom Tom Great Britain maps come with the Adventure 2 Plus as an option for free, but you will then see the drop down boxes where you can either pick 1 to 50 for the whole of Great Britain or 1 to 25 for the whole of Great Britain. All three units have got 32 gigabytes internal storage. You will find there's about four or five gigabytes of that is used up for the applications for running the units, but you do have enough space for those maps. Now, one advantage you do have on the Adventurer 2 Plus that we don't have on the Terra and the Cross Plus 
when we take the battery out inside this unit it has a micro SD slot where you can put additional memory onto the unit for maps and it allows you to put up to a 32 gig micro SD card on the unit but you only get the micro SD card adaption on the uh, sorry option should I say on the Adventurer 2 Plus unit. Now in the box with all three units you get a USB cable for charging or data connection. We have a USB-C connection on the Terra and the Cross Plus and it's a USB micro connection on the Adventurer 2 Plus but all three units come with the USB cable included. One extra accessory that you get with the Terra, the middle sized one and the Cross Plus is a standard bike mount for a pedal cycle not for a motorbike to mount onto the handlebars so it looks a bit like the quad lock attachments that I've seen before so if I turn these two units over you'll see on the back of them unlike the bigger Adventurer 2 they have this locking attachment that locks onto this bicycle mount so this bicycle mount would sit on top of your bars on, on your bike there's a couple of different rubber attachments that would sit on top of your bars and then you've just got the typical rubber loops in a few different sizes that you lock around your bars to lock that in place. So you do get that included with the Terra and the Cross Plus. There's various other accessories available um, for mounting on the bicycle, but that one is included for free. We do actually, if you did want to use the bigger Adventurer 2 Plus on a pedal bike rather than a motorbike, we do actually have a cycle mount available for it. It's a cradle that slides on the back and then the cradle on the back has the same sort of attachment that we see on the back of the other units so you can use it with the bike mounts. So I'm just going to turn them back over and go through some options, um, sorry the options on the screen sizes, the physical weights of the unit and the battery type because again that could be the deciding factor on which unit you go for. So on the Cross Plus on the left hand side first that has a 3.2 inch screen across the diagonal Gorilla Glass screen, sunlight readable, touch screen. The middle one, the Terra, we then jump up to a 3.7 inch screen, so slightly bigger from the 3.2 inch. And then right on the right hand side, the biggest one um, is this bigger unit. Now actually, I should say the screen is the same size. These two have actually both got the same size screen, 3.7 inches. The main difference being, other than the things I've already mentioned about the removable battery, the speaker on the back, the motorbike mount option um, and the micro card. This one of course has got a lot more buttons on the front so it's a unit that you can basically use just with the buttons or the touch screen hence it's a bigger size and that what gives it more weight but actually the screen itself is the same 3.7 inch across the diagonal. All of the screens are sunlight readable and bright sunlight. They all respond when they're wet, much better than a mobile phone would be. They've actually got a setting that adapts the backlight setting to different light conditions. I've actually got the three turned on here just with the standard, um, well I've actually put it at 50% backlight, but there's an option where you can have it automatically adjust to backlight settings due to the light conditions or change during the night. There's actually little light sensors on the front of the units. So that was the screen size, 3.2 inch on the Cross Plus and the Terra and Adventurer 2 Plus unit both have a 3.7 inch screen across the diagonal. If I go through the weights of the unit, the lightest one is the Cross Plus at 172 grams, the middle one, the Terra, 198 grams and the biggest one size wise and weight, the Adventurer 2 Plus is 290 grams. Dimensions of the units are starting with the smallest one left to right. Cross plus is 63 by 110 by 21 millimeters. The terror in the middle is 80 by 115 by 19 millimeters depth. And finally, the Adventurer 2 plus 80 millimeters, the so same width as the terror, but 131 millimeters tall and 31 millimeters deep. So it is a lot deeper. So if I turn these two round and see the depth on the one with the battery it is a lot deeper and again if I turn these two round it just gives you an idea of the depth on these two which was basically the same. So I'm just going to put it back there on the map. 
So that is just going through the dimensions and the weights. I'm just going to go through the battery life now because we do have different battery life with the three units. So internal battery on the Cross Plus, we're looking at approximately 20 hours. We tend to base that on 50% backlight setting and using GPS only rather than all three units I should mention, pick up GPS, Galileo, GLONASS and Beidou. So there's various settings you can set what satellites you want to pick. We find the option of GPS, Galileo and Beidou seems to be working best in the UK. But the battery life is based on GPS only and screen set at about 50% backlight. We've got 20 hours on the Cross Plus. The Terra is 15 hours. Um, we believe that's with it having the bigger screen. Um, that's why we've got lesser battery than the smaller unit. So it is 15 hours. Potentially you can increase battery light by not having the screen on all the time, adjusting backlight and turning off various settings. But if we work on about 15 hours approximately with a screen on all the time, but 50% um, backlight, the biggest battery life is the Adventure 2 Plus, which is 36 hours. Again, that is based on the screen on about 50% backlight, but being on all the time. All of the units, we can increase the backlight by having the screen go off after 15 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, etc. Or you can manually have the unit where I'm just going to press a button on the Adventure 2 Plus, screens went off, press a button, screen straight back on. I can do that on all of the units, screen off, screen straight back on. So it could be that you just turn the screen off when it's not being used, but it's still recording in the background and it instantly comes back on. That is going to increase your battery life. And I tend to find the units charge themselves within a couple of hours. So we've got on the units, on the smaller unit here, the USB-C slot at the bottom there for charging. You get the charging cable. Same on this one, the Terra, the slot is at the bottom. And if I go to the Adventure 2 Plus, it's on the back there, a little rubber flap where we've got the micro cable. Remember with the Adventure 2 Plus though, you do have the option of buying a spare battery or the AA battery pack. Um, all three of the units I just mentioned earlier, um, GPS wise, they all pick up GPS, GLONASS, Galileo and Beidou. You can have it set as one option, two options or three options all at the same time to increase the accuracy. I found when I've been using the units, I've even had them down to one foot accuracy, but they seem to be sitting around about the three to six foot. It will depend on the environment that you're in. All of the units have a, a sounder, a buzzer, so they will alert you when you go off course with sound that you can turn on or off. The main difference being when we look on the, sorry, it was the Adventurer unit, has the speaker for voice commands when you're using the TomTom Tom maps, but you all have sounders for like off course alerts, so you can set up waypoints to alert you when you're close to a waypoint. I've set all three of the units to point north up on the maps, um, just so that they're not moving around, but all three units have an electronic compass that you can calibrate, and that means when you turn the unit, I'll actually put this one so it's not north up, so you'll see on the Adventure 2 Plus, I don't know if you can see that when I turn it, the map turns with me to the way I'm heading. And when I turn it back, it'll turn back to the way I'm heading. Or I can just put it as north up. So I've just set them all at north up just for the video. But they all have um, the three access electronic compass. So when you're stationary, the map will turn with you. Or when you're moving, um, it turns with you using satellites when you get over a certain speed. They've all got built-in alt barometric altimeters as well. So we've all got altimeters on the units. All three of them have got a 5G Wi-Fi connection, so you can do software updates via Wi-Fi and 5G connection, and you can update the maps, install the maps using Wi-Fi. There's an app on the phone you can put on your phone called the Link app that lets you transfer routes without the need for a computer to put GPX files on the units, which is really good. And all three of the units have got Bluetooth connection for um, obviously connecting to the phone for transferring a route, but you can also connect heart rate monitors, speed and cadence sensors that you can get from TuneNav. It's Bluetooth connection only for that. So really the video was just to give you an idea of the differences between the units, but I'm just gonna show you now on the screens of the units um, where we talk about the extra button control on the Adventure 2 Plus and just the button control 
that we've got on the other units. So the advantage maybe over getting the Adventurer 2 Plus if you want that bigger unit and you're deciding between the Terra and the Adventurer 2 Plus, this one has the joystick control for moving the maps. You can see it's moving nice and quick. I can use the joystick. It's got a button here on the left that centers the map back on where I am. I can zoom in and out using the buttons. And it's actually got a button that goes through different data screens. I can bring up the compass screen all by pressing a button without using the touch screen. We also have some buttons on the side of the unit. So we've got a button we can set to do different functions. It could be to lock the screen. I've actually just got the button on the left hand side and right hand side just turning the screen off. But you can set up that left hand button to lock the screen but keep it on. But if we're using the touch screen, you'll see we can, we can move around on the touch screen and we've got plus and minus for zooming in and out and we can recenter the map from the touch screen. We do still need to, if you want to access certain settings, like the things to do with activity recording, etc. Some of those settings are still quicker to be accessed from the actual touch screen. I can go into main menu, etc. But I have got a button here that if I hold in, will take me to the main menu that I can use the joystick or I can use the touch screen. So it's just a bit more control using the buttons on this one, especially if you're wearing gloves or maybe motorbike use. But if I go to the other two units now, what they've got on them is, if you want to zoom in and out on the map, we can use the buttons on the side of the unit for zooming in and out. If I move the map using the touch screen and then I want to center it back to where I am, I have got a button on the side that does realign it on your current location. Other than that, the only other button, the on off button, we can use to turn the screen off or on or turn the screen it off. Let's turn the, sorry, unit off, power it off. Otherwise you are going to be using the touch screen to access menus. We can use the buttons, the arrows on the left and right there. It's still the touch screen, even though they're marked there to move between different screens, data box screens, compass screen. And again, I mentioned we can get to the main menu. So most of the control is done via the touch screen, but it is nice when you're out using it, you have got a plus and minus for zooming in and out. Because let's face it, a lot of the time, the main use is gonna be potentially on the map and you just wanna zoom in and out on the map. And then if you have moved the map away from where you are, you just wanna put it back to where you are with the button. One nice setting we have noticed on all three units that I haven't seen on a GPS before that we sell, there isn't a setting you can set so that if you have moved the map and you don't move it back using the button to where you currently are, you can set it so after so many seconds, it will automatically center back to where you are. And if I just go to the smaller unit, it's very similar button control to the middle one. We've basically got the plus and minus buttons to zoom in and out and the button basically to center it back where you are. If you've accidentally moved it, so I've used the touch screen, moved it somewhere else, and I want to put it back to where I am. And then the button that we can use, the on-off button, I can actually use to take the screen off or put the screen back on. Otherwise, you are going to be using the touch screen to access various menus and various options on the screens, whether it be the recording, options for recording your activities. So I hope this video has just give you a better idea of the differences between the three units and why you might pick one over the other. You will find full specifications for all of the units on the individual product unit, sorry, product page for each of the Cross Plus, the Terra, the Adventurer 2 Plus, or the Adventurer 2 Plus motor unit. But we hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.